We're about a week out now from the City of Houston elections, and we're back with City Controller candidate Bill Frazier. Bill, welcome back to Texas GOP Vote. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit more now about the pensions that we talked about in the okay. last interview. Um, that's one of our biggest debts here in the City of Houston, and we've compared Houston with Detroit and right. some other things. Tell us about the, the pension here in Houston and, and what it looks like. Okay, well, there are three pension funds. There's the uh, firefighters fund, the police officers pension system, and the municipal workers system. So they're all managed separately, and under state law, they're managed by the, the pension trusts, which are appointed by the uh, employee representatives. So the city uh, has no control over the pension funds. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I say administered by, they do all the benefits administration, they do all the investments. Each of them has their own investment committee and they make their own investments. Uh, and so when we want to look into the pension issues, we have to have their permission to do an in-depth study. So it makes it very difficult for Houston to have really any impact on how well the pension right. is performing. Right even though we're still obligated to fund right. it. Over. Right, we're obligated to fund it and under a defined benefit type plan, if the pension fund's performance doesn't measure up to their estimated performance, which is eight and a half percent return per year, then the city's contributions uh, have to increase to cover that shortfall. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to note that on an overall basis, not individually but combined, those pension funds have not in the past 10 years have not earned eight and a half percent. It's closer to just under seven percent. Mm -hmm. So we have to make up that difference then. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the rate of return estimate is high, uh, one, just one of the reasons is because it lowers our annual pension requirements. The the higher the rate of return, if the funds earn that money, then that reduces our cost. Mm -hmm. But it also, because it reduces our costs, it reduces our annual contribution requirement. So uh, it's important to note that even with a lower contribution requirement due to a higher estimate, we're still not able to make the contributions that we're required to make each year. Now, from what I understand, the city of Detroit borrowed money from creditors to, right. to fund their pension obligations. Yes. In Houston, we've taken the tact of borrowing money from basically from the pension From the fund themselves, yeah. And so if Houston was to get into financial trouble and go broke, it wouldn't be the creditors that would be stuck with it, it would be the actual yeah. retirees. Well, that to a large extent. Out of the $1.6 billion of pension obligations we have today, now these are for earned benefits, this is not a future accounting mm -hmm. estimate. This is for money that we should have paid out already, or contributed already. Uh, out of the $1.6 billion, $600 million is in pension obligation bonds. Mm -hmm. The other billion dollars we borrowed from the pension funds themselves. In Detroit, they borrowed most of their money in, in the form of pension obligation bonds. They contributed the money to the funds, and then the fun, those funds made very bad investments. There was an announcement just last week by Kevin Orr that uh, he's, he's trying to freeze the payments out of those funds because their investments have been so bad. Mm -hmm. But they still owe the, the bondholders, okay? <laughs> so it's a little bit different type of situation. You mentioned um, when we talked once before that the Houston Fire Department pension is in pretty good shape compared to some of the others. Well, in terms of their investment returns, and I, I really haven't compared them to the others, I just know that uh, they have a, a very good investment program. They've got a chief investment officer that's highly regarded, mm -hmm. and, and their investments uh, appear to be uh, safe. I don't. Want, I shouldn't use the word safe because I don't really know what they're in. But uh, they do have a pretty good program. The, the 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 point is that we don't really know because under the state law, they don't have to give us a deep insights into it, and so we haven't had the opportunity to look in, into it. Now they have been audited by an independent auditing firm, mm -hmm. which gives us some comfort. But in, in terms of details, we don't have any details. And without that control, we could end up in a situation like what's happened up in Detroit, where, yep. where they had corruption based, I don't know if it was corruption, but some misapplication yes. of funds. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about what's happened down there. Well, uh, like I said, they, they announced, uh, Kevin Orr announced last week that there's been a three or four month investigation into some of those investments. They've made some uh, investments into real estate, uh, investments that that there might have been some conflicts of interest uh, and those investments have failed. Mm -hmm. There's been some pay, some payments to individuals that shouldn't have been made and there's some other uh, accounting and administrative functions that haven't been, been performed correctly. So these are the kinds of things that 
uh, under a situation in Houston, if those things were happening, going on, the city would not have any insights into it because we don't have any control over our pension funds. That's the one thing we need to do with the state legislature is to uh, lobby them and the, all, this, all city, the city uh, leaders, mayor, city council members, mm -hmm. business leaders, civic leaders, we need to get all together, get on the same page, and do whatever we can to get control of our pension systems on our own and not have to rely on the state. Let's talk real briefly about the job of city controller and why it's important that a CPA be in that position. Well, all the activities of the city controller in, in terms of, of the investments of the city funds and in doing the annual reports and quarterly reports and reporting on things like the, uh, the drainage fee, the drainage fund for instance, all those functions are better, better handled and better led by somebody who's got uh, a career and a history of doing this and trained to do it. I'm a certified public accountant. That's what I've been trained to do. I've been doing this for 40 years. I've been a CPA for 38 years. I've got broad experience in doing this and I've got lots of contacts out in the private sector that we can pull in to be subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I mentioned earlier that I'm a, uh, I was president of the Houston CPA Society. There are 8,000 members of that society locally that I can, I can draw upon. And also I'm on the board of directors of the Texas CPA Societies. So I've got lots of contacts and insights into, into the accounting and reporting side of the business. I think we can show an example of that where on the, the drainage fee that right. we, we've talked about, on your website you have a, a great deal of information that should be available from the city controller's office, but right. you've had to dig this information out right. and, and talk about that a little bit. Well, putting that report together, uh, the first thing I did was I went on, on the website, the controller's website, the finance department website, and the, uh, the, the Rebuild Houston website. There was uh, some information on the Rebuild Houston website as to what they were going to do going forward over the next five years. Very little information about how much money they collected and what was in that fund and how that fund was being administered. Mm -hmm. the, the reports were very confusing and there was no single source of information on what was contributed every year from the various sources and how that money was being spent. So I went and looked at the city budgets for the three years, for the three year period and those budgets are 900 pages long and they're two volumes. So you gotta dig through a lot of information in order, to, in order to pull it out. And so I just summarized what I see happening mm -hmm. and uh, it, it looked to me like the funds uh, are collecting $103 million a year from the drainage fee, okay? It was supposed to be, if you look at the ordinance that was passed by city council mm -hmm. based upon the, uh, the, the vote of the people, we were supposed to, to raise $125 million every year. Mm -hmm. Well, we're only raising $103 million a year. So when you look at, at the expectations of the, of the taxpayer, uh, $20 million a year or $22 million a year shortage is a lot of money over three years. Mm -hmm. There was also supposed to be, there were estimates initially of how much money was gonna be transferred in from ad valorem taxes. And that's, that doesn't look right to me. The first year there was zero, and it shouldn't be zero. Mm -hmm. The second year was 11 million, and I computed it should be about 21 million. And in the third year, they also had $11 million. Now, Stephen Costello just announced that that amount was gonna go up uh, just today or yesterday, but in the budget, it's still stuck at around $11 million. So I think the controller should take a look at what's going on in that fund and make sure we do it right. We can't mess this up. If we allow that fund to be shortchanged and not funded properly, it's gonna become another pension fund over time. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go down the road and all these uh, maintenance and, and street repairs that we need to do are not gonna get done and we're gonna, we're gonna just dig ourselves in a deeper and deeper hole. Even though the mayor had promised this money would go into this lockbox and they've actually been spending it on some other things as well. Well, I don't know. I, first of all, I don't think the money's going in there and being mm -hmm. spent on other things. I don't, I don't know where the money's going. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know that uh, they transferred maintenance workers over into the fund and there is a provision in there that a certain percent could be spent on maintenance and I think they're spending in excess of that. Again, uh, until somebody goes in who's on the inside and can, and can do a thorough review of this. Mm -hmm. What I've got on my website is my estimate, and I think it's pretty accurate. I've talked to some of the people who supported the, the drainage fee and the, and, the, and the program, and they tell me that, that what I've reported in their mind is pretty accurate on what's going on. 
but they too want a clear, concise quarterly report with town hall meetings so that they can explain it to the taxpayers and, and the people that need the work done what exactly is going on. They, they keep telling us that, well, the, the money's going to come in greater and greater in the future, and I believe that's going to happen. But we, we just need to, to manage expectations through better communication. I think uh, over the course of these interviews, you clearly laid out why we need you and why we need right. a CPA in this, this position. Early voting is getting ready to start. Right. Uh, uh, October 21st, Monday. Okay. So uh, everybody go out and, and early vote if that's what you like to do. Uh, if not, uh, Election Day is Tuesday, November 5th. Okay, and we want to urge all conservatives in the city of Houston to come out where you can truly make a difference. Voter turnout is typically very small in city elections, and it gives you a great opportunity to have an impact on the future of the city's finances. Bill, thank you for informing the people of, of okay. Houston about this, and we look forward to the uh, results from the election. Now. Okay, thank you.